Hi guys, welcome back. So today I've got another video for you where we're going to be uh, creating this um, this kind of image on hover effect. So you can see we have this list here. When we hover each of our uh, items on the list, we get the, um, the image, the uh, texture changes. And we, you can see we also get this nice RGB split and this curve uh, effect on our image when we uh, move our mouse. Okay, when we leave the area, the image disappears. Okay, so it's a really cool effect. It's built using uh, FreeJS and WebGL. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Let's get going. Thanks. Okay, guys, so to get started with this project, you will need to install Node.js on your machine. Just go to nodejs.org um, and download the latest version. We're also going to be using FreeJS uh, just to uh, create our meshes, and FreeJS gives, makes it easier for us to apply a kind of WebGL um, and shader effects to our to our meshes to get our RGB effect. So I came to the project folder now, you can see I've just got um, an index.html file, a style.css file, I've got this custom og font here as well, um, and I've got a JS folder, this contains our um, app.js file and our images.js file. Um, we all have a, a sub a shaders folder as well, containing our fragment and vertex GLSL files, which we're going to be using. Then I have an images folder here, just delete this disk, don't need that for now. This images folder just contains four random images sourced from unsplash.com. Okay, use any site you want. Pexels is another good one. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, initialize a node project here in our terminal. So we'll just say npm i, uh, I init sorry dash y, and this will just create a basic node project. You see, we've got a package.json file now, um, and then I'm just going to install FreeJS. So we'll just say npm i uh, free and I'll install the FreeJS library. You can see that listed under our dependencies now. So next thing we wanna do, so if we come into our index.html file, I'm gonna get a boilerplate up and running, just to emit with an exclamation mark. And then in the head, header, I'm just gonna to link to our style.css, style.css like so. And then in the body, I'm just gonna to link to our uh, app.js file. So go to our JS folder and app.js. Okay, then in the body, I'm just going to say main, a main element. In here, we'll have an unordered list, a UL, and then an LI, um, just say whatever you want, really, home, about projects. This could be anything you want. It could be like a project list, but I'm just going to go for the kind of nav bar route here. So say projects and contact. Okay, and that is pretty much it for our HTML. So nice and easy. Um, we're going to be using Parcel.js, it's a bundler for this project, okay? So this uh, just basically bundles all of our assets because we're going to be importing the FreeJS libraries as well as our images as well. And this makes it really easy. So what you need to do is just install this globally using this command here, npm install-g parcel bundler. Once that is installed, just run it in your terminal. So we'll just say parcel in the terminal here. And I'm just gonna say index.html. Okay, and then you can see we have that running on the server on this port 62883. And you can see there's our list in the browser. Okay, so let's come into our style.css now. And the first thing we want to do in the style.css is just um, I want to get that font loaded, that og font. So I'm just going to say um, at font face. And then we'll just say og up here, OGG. And then in the URL, I just direct it to that uh, file. And then we need to specify the uh, format, which is WAF2. Use whatever font you want. It could be Google Fonts, but I'm just using this custom font for now. Okay, so next I want to just set the global. So we say margin zero, padding um, zero. And we'd also just say box size in border box. And then underneath this, I'm just going to say, um, we'll set the font family to that og font. And then I'm going to specify the font size to be 1.5 rem. And then I'm also just going to, we'll set the, um, the color to be this just dark gray. So one three, one three, one three, like so. Okay, and now you can see our nice font is applied. Um, so kind of underneath this, next thing we want to do here is I'm going to just uh, get the uh, main element. I know I did the HTML body, and I'm just going to just change the background colour for this. We'll just say um, background, I want to give us a grey colour, so we'll say D-A-D-A-D-A. -D -A -D -A. 
And then underneath this, we're gonna set the main element, we're going to position this um, fixed. Uh, we'll say top, zero, left, zero. And then we give it a width of 100% to fill the screen horizontally and a height of 100 viewport heights to fill it vertically. Okay, now kind of underneath this, let's get our UL. We're going to position this absolute, so it's relative to the parent main element. We're going to say left of 10%, we'll say top of 20%. And then I'm going to give this a width of 80% and a height of 60%. And then, so you can see we've got a bit of white space now. And then I'm just gonna um, say list style of none to get rid of them bullet points. And then we'll just also say uh, display of flex because we want to space these out. And uh, we need to just uh, flex direction column on that to make them appear underneath each other again. And then I'm gonna justify our content with space between to get a nice even space in between our kind of um, list elements. Underneath this, I'm just gonna set the uh, individual li elements next and i'm just going to say position relative and i'm going to give these um, a border bottom okay i'm just going to say one pixel uh, solid black but i want to actually adjust the black just to make it transparent so i'll just hover this come down here we'll make it nice and subtle yeah, around this point here so you can barely see it okay so now um, underneath this i'm next just going to say um, cursor pointer and then we'll also say a transition of uh, one second just for our kind of smooth um, hover effects which will come soon when we implement our javascript i'm just going to say ul li hover and here i'm just going to set the opacity to one which will be li hover and we'll just set the opacity to one and I'm going to specify here um, exclamation mark uh, important, okay? And this basically just will override all other settings, okay? It makes it this um, hover setting the most important, so we'll apply that effect. And you'll see why we do this later. So coming into our images.js file now, I'm going to import each of our images in our images folder. So I'm going to say here, import image one from dot forward slash, go to our images folder. And then we want to just also just reference that first image, so one.jpg. I'm going to do this for the for the three images as well, the remaining three images. So image two, and I've, I've named my images one dot jpeg, two dot jpeg. Um, so yeah, image three, change that to three, and then image four, just say four. And I'm going to create an object next called images. So say const images, and that's just going to be an object containing each of the imports. So image one. Image two, image three, and I'm just going to tidy this up, put it underneath each other, and then finally here, I'm just going to export this object. So we say export default, and we're just going to say images because we're going to be importing this into our app.js folder of our file. Okay, so now if we come to our app.js file, just save that, and that's it for images.js. So the first one I want to do here is just import our free JS library. So say import all as free from uh, free, like so. And then I'm also just going, if, so for example, if I console log free, this is why we're using the parcel bundler, just so we can get this running directly um, on a host on like a server. Okay, this free JS library. You can see now, let me just, Just save this document. Okay, so now you can see in our console there we have all the kind of free JS um, attributes there. I'm next going to import our images, which we just created, so that images object. So we say import images from dot forward slash images. And then if I console.log the images, you should see in the term in the console we get our image one, two, three, four listed. Okay, so that's great. We've imported our images. Um, so what I want to do next, just delete this console log. We don't need that. So I'm going to say here, function lerp. Okay, and this is linear interpolation. This takes in a start, an end, and an ease. We're just going to say T for now. Return start times bracket one minus T, and then come out of bracket plus end times T. 
This is just like an easing function. It allows us to get a kind of smooth animation effect. It takes a start and an end point and then an ease, a, a ease variable, which is like a percentage and it calculates the percentage between that start and end point. And it's a really important, I use this function all the time. And that's going to specify two variables, target X and target Y. They're both going to equal zero. And these are going to be the mouse coordinates that we're going to change on mouse move. Okay. I'll just comment this here, just say uh, mouse coordinates. This is what we're going to be using to move our mesh, our free JS mesh. Okay. So now come underneath this, the next thing we want to do here is I'm just going to load um, our image textures. Okay. So remember we imported our images. Now we're going to create um, some textures, some free JS textures, which we're going to apply to our mesh when we hover our uh, list. So I'm going to say const texture one equals new uh, free dot texture loader. And then we're going to do the load method on here. And then we're going to take the image images object that we imported. And then we're just going to say dot image one. Okay. And that will load um, that image onto a kind of free JS texture. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do the same for the other three images, so two and four. Obviously change the uh, imports here as well, so two, um, two, three. And four. Okay, that's it for our texture imports. So now let's get a, um, a kind of WebGL class up and running. So class here, uh, WebGL, call it what you want. It could be Sketch or Canvas, whatever you want, really. Um, let's get the constructor. So the first thing we're going to do is just get our container. So we'll say this dot container equals document dot query selector. And we're going to select that main element. Okay, because this is where we're going to append our renderer to. Then we're going to get all the links. So we say this dot links equals. We're doing array with a spread operator. Do document dot query select to all, and then we'll just say uh, li. So now, if we console dot log these links, this dot links, and then let's just initialize that WebGL at the bottom here. New WebGL. Now, if we go into our console in the browser, we should see our um, links listed in an array. And there you go. Before and we can see our links listed there. So that's working. Move that console log. So the next thing we want to do here is I'm just going to say this dot scene equals new free dot scene, and this is going just to be the, the initial scene where we're going to load all our mesh object to. Next thing we want to do is say this dot perspective equals 1000. This is uh, the perspective of the camera on the z-axis, um, so it's the kind of distance from the screen. We're going to be using this to kind of calculate our field of view, so we can plot the mesh in the on the correct coordinates in a three dimensional space. Okay, so underneath this, next thing we want to do here is we're going to say this dot sizes, uh, that's going to equal a new three dot vector two. And this takes in like an X position, an X width and a Y length, okay? An X length and a Y, so width and length. I'm gonna set them at zero for, for now. This is going to be the size of our mesh, okay? So the um, the kind of image you see on the uh, when we hover the uh, link element list elements. We're also going to set an offset. So say this dot offset equals. We're going to be using the uh, vector two as well. I'll just copy this for now, and we'll set the initial point at zero zero. Okay, so I'll just do a comment here. This is the mesh uh, position on the screen. This is obviously going to be changed when we move our mouse. And then after this, we're just going to say this dot uniforms. This is going to be the kind of variables we pass to our shader programs, our vertex shader and fragment shader. The first uh, variable is the U texture. This will be the um, one of the textures we loaded above this WebGL class. I'll set the value just to be texture one initially. Okay. Um, and then we'll say U alpha. This is going to be used to, for the opacity of the mesh. And I'll set this initially at 0.0, .0 so it'll be see-through and transparent, okay? Um, and then finally, you just want a U offset, and this is the, just the position of our of our mesh, okay? And this will let, allow us to perform that kind of deformation curve effect. So I'm going to set the value um, to be a new free dot vector 2 And again, I'll just set the initial site, um, X and Y numbers to be 0, .0 uh, floats. Okay, that's it for our uniforms. 
Now, coming underneath this, I just want to loop through our links. So we're going to say this dot links dot for each, and then we're going to say link, and we're going to pass in the link in the index here. Okay, we'll do an arrow function out of that, and then I'm going to loop through the link. So for link dot add event listener. Okay, we're going to add event list to each link, and then it's, we're going to listen for a mouse enter. Okay. And then we're going to say here, we're basically going to do a switch uh, statement here. So we'll say switch, and we'll reference the index that we pass in, in the for each method. And so we'll say when the case is zero, so the first uh, list item, we'll set the uniform um, texture to be the texture one. Okay, so set the dot value equals texture one. And remember to break out of this. And then for the case of one, so the second list item, We'll set the um, uh, U texture, just copy this. We can set this to texture two. And just do this for the remaining uh, two images. Again, not forgetting to break out. I'm not using the case statement for a while. So we say case two, and then we'll just say uh, three. And then finally, we'll just do case of three. And we'll set the, uh, when the, uh, third, uh, the fourth link is hovered, we'll just set that texture to four, okay? So this will change the, uh, the image on our mesh. And that's it for our um, like cycling through each of our links. So kind of underneath this, um, what do you want to do next? I think that's pretty much it. So now I'm just going to say this dot add event listeners, okay? And this is just going to be a function we initialize when we load our WebGL we're going to pass in the um, just the, the uh, actual unordered list element to the UL. And what we're doing here is we're going to create a um, method within this uh, WebGL class. Okay, and this uh, add event listeners function is just going to say when we hover that uh, UL, we want... Um, yes, yeah, so we take pass in the element here and we'll say element.add event listener. And when we uh, mouse enter, so when we enter the UL, when we put the mouse over the unordered list, what we're going to do here is we're going to set, we're going to say this dot uh, links hovered equals true. Okay. And then we're also just going to do a mouse leave event listener. And then when we leave, when we leave the uh, list element, we want to set that links hover variable back to false, okay, or to false. So say this dot links hover equals false. And we're going to be using this links hover just to um, render our mesh um, uh, transparent or in full view using the U alpha variable. You'll see that, you'll see how we achieve that in the render function coming up. So now we're going to create a method called setup camera. Okay, so if we uh, come underneath this add event listeners function or method, um, the first we need to do actually is just get a getter function. So I'm going to say get viewport, and this will just get our viewport sizes, dimensions. So we can say let width equals the window dot inner width. And this will get the uh, inner width of the window or the width in, in pixels. Height, that's the window dot inner height. So that's the viewport height in pixels. We next uh, get the aspect ratio. And this is just uh, going to be the width divided by the height. Okay, and this is all going to be used for our camera when we set that up. And then we're just going to return an object here, just containing those three variables we just created. So this get keyword in front of the viewport, it just signalizes that it's a getter function that we can use for kind of this, you know, calculating our dimensions for the camera and the scene, that kind of thing. So now we're going to create that setup camera method. And I'm just going to say here, so, um, we're first just going to say this dot camera. Should we do a field? Sorry, a field of view variable first. We'll say let FIV equals, and the, there's a bit of math here. So we're going to say parentheses 180 times two. That should be in parentheses. Two times um, math dot atan. So atan. That's for the arc tangent um, function, and then. We're going to pass in this dot viewport dot height, and then we're going to divide that by two, and then we're further going to divide it by this dot perspective, which is a uh, one thousand, and then we're going to come out of this. 
and we're just going to divide that by math.pi. Okay, so just to try and explain this as best I can, let's just change that to FOV. Um, if I just show this diagram, so you can see here we have this, um, let's move that, we have this plane size here, this green line here, that's our screen, okay? And then we have this red line which signalizes the perspective or the Z, the distance of our camera from the screen. We got 180 here because we have two 90 degree angles here. Our spleen's uh, separated into two segments. 90 plus 90 is 180, obviously. And then, you know, we're, we're kind of dividing the viewport by two due to those two segments. And then we're further dividing it by the perspective on the Z axis. Okay, and then we're further dividing it by math.pi just to get this field of view arc here. Okay, so that, that's the kind of equation we use to get this field of view um, variable. And this will allow us to position the mesh on our screen um, with the correct 3D coordinates and it will be scaled correctly as well in pixels. So now we can initialize our camera. We can say this.camera equals new 3.perspective camera. And here we pass in the field of view. And then we can pass in the aspect ratio. So that's uh, this.viewport, our getter function. And we can just say aspect ratio. And then further to, we could, next we can just say uh, the near to be 0 0.1 and the far to be 1000, okay, to match our uh, perspective. I'm next going to say this.camera.position.set, I want to set it zero on the X and Y axis, and we're going to say this.perspective for the Z axis. That's it for our camera. Next, we want to initialize our renderer. So in our renderer, so this is basically the canvas we attach to our main element. We're going to say this.renderer equals new free dot webgl1 renderer and here we're just going to pass in some parameters so anti-alias of true that just smooths out all the edges and alpha to be true as well just to make our canvas transparent so we can see the uh, underlying html next we're going to say this dot renderer dot set size and then we're going to use our viewport getter function again so we'll say this dot viewport dot width for the width argument and the same for the height this dot viewport dot height Okay, so next we want to say this dot renderer um, dot set pick. Um, we need to set the pixel ratio next. Okay, so it's going to say set pixel ratio. We're going to pass in the window dot device pixel ratio. This is very important, especially if a retina display. Um, otherwise, your mesh will just look blurry. And then we're just going to append this uh, renderer dot dom element to our container. Okay, so this dot container dot append child this dot renderer dot dom, dot dom element. So now if we come to our document, you should see we have the canvas in our elements. So it's been appended correctly and that's great. Um, that's pretty much it for our setup camera. We just need to add one more thing here and that's uh, a function for when, our, when we resize our window. If we resize our window, we need to basically um, readjust the dimensions of the camera, uh, the field of view, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to say here underneath this comment, we we'll just say window add event listener, listen up for a resize event. And then I'm just going to say here, uh, we'll do a function. Actually, no, sorry, we won't do a function in here. We'll, um, we'll create a separate method. We'll just say um, this dot uh, on window resize. And we need to bind the this keyword to call this function when we resize. So we say dot bind this. Okay, so let's create that function now. So on window resize. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to say this dot camera dot aspect. And then we're just going to use the uh, viewport function again. So this dot viewport aspect ratio. We need to reset the aspect ratio as we resize in our screen dimensions. We're going to say this dot camera dot field of view. And we're going to pass in, uh, we're going to just copy this uh, equation up here. Remember, we might have a new height now, so that's why we have to kind of adjust the field of view in case the height of the screen changes. And then I'm going to say this dot renderer dot set um, size, and that's going to be this dot viewport dot width, and this dot viewport dot height for the second argument. And then finally, we just need to say this dot camera dot update projection matrix. And this will just uh, rescale all of our meshes and make sure it's a, 
you know, the correct dimensions. And that's it for our window resize uh, method. Okay, so let's come back up to our constructor. Um, and then, so we've got our camera set up, set up now. Next thing we wanna do here is we're just gonna create our mesh. Actually, let's do the mouse move first. Let's get the mouse move function up and running just so we can, um, you know, adjust those target X and Y coordinates when we move our mouse. Okay, so let's just get my typing in order first. Okay, so let's just create this on mouse move function or method. Come under our get viewport, say so on mouse move. And here we're just going to say um, window.addEventListener. And then we want, we want to listen for the mouse move event here. And then I'm just going to say pass in the event. And then we'll just say target X. So that variable we set at the top of the, uh, the file JavaScript. We can set that to e.clientX. And then target Y equals e.clientY. And that's it for our mouse move function. Okay, so if we come back up to, let's come up to the uh, constructor again, and we're gonna create a, a new method underneath this, so we wanna create the mesh next. So we'll say this.createMesh. Now, if we come under our window.resize, create mesh. The first thing we need to do when we create a mesh is uh, create a geometry, okay? So we're going to be using the plane geometry. So say this.geometry equals new uh, free, dot plane uh, geometry. Okay, and we've just passed and make the width one, height one, segments can be 20. This isn't really important for now, to be honest. Then we can say, then we need to establish a material. So we just say for now, this dot material, we'll just use the um, free dot mesh basic material to begin with. Okay, just so we can see the mesh appear on our screen. We're going to be using uh, shaders shortly. But I'll just pass in the color parameter now. We'll just make it this red. So I've used the red hexadecimal here. We'll then say this uh, dot mesh equals new uh, free dot mesh. And this will, uh, this takes in uh, two arguments, the mesh. So we just say this dot geometry and it takes in the material. So we'll say this dot material. And then we need to set the sizes of the mesh next. We'll say this dot sizes dot set and I'm just gonna set the size to 250 pixels on the x-axis and 350 on the y, so a width of 250 and a height of uh, 350. And we're setting that sizes that using this vector two. And then now we've set the sizes, we can just say this.mesh uh, scale dot set, and then I'll just say this.sizes.x for the width, and we'll just say this.sizes.y for the height. Um, we we'll set the position next. So this dot mesh, this dot mesh dot position dot set, and we're just going to say here this dot offset dot x, and then the second will be this dot offset dot y. Remember, we initially set those to zero zero at the top, so they should appear in the center of our screen. Okay, to so just show you the the offset uh, here, yeah zero zero, and that's uh, in the center of our screen here when we um in three dimensional coordinates. Okay, so now underneath this, let's just add this to our scene. So we'll say this.scene.add, and we'll just add this.mesh. And then I'm just gonna say, I need to just um, create a render function next. We'll say this.render. And then if I just come to the bottom, it should just be render. So if we do the render method here. And here I'm just going to say this.renderer.render. Dot dot render, and then we want to render this.scene for the first argument. And then we want to pass in the camera. So this.camera. Okay, now you can see our mesh uh, has appeared our screens, that's all good. OK, 
okay, it looks like it's still not adjusting the proportions correctly when we resize the screen, so we'll sort that out in a second. Actually, I think if we just run this function, if we just do um, this dot renderer, I mean, to request an animation frame here, sorry. So we'll just say, um, um, yeah, we do a, a request animation frame. Request animation frame. I'm just going to repeatedly call this render function. So say this dot render dot bind this. Okay, so now we sh it should adjust sizes when we resize our window. Okay, yep, yeah, and it does. So now our mesh isn't coming out of uh, scale. It's always uh, 250 on the width and 350 on the uh, length. So that's great. Okay, so now I think it's a good time just to get our kind of um, shaders uh, up and running. Okay, so if we go into our shader program, we'll do the vertex shader first. And the first thing we want to do in our vertex shader is just um, initialize our uniform. So we'll say the first uniform will be the U texture. So we'd say uniform, that's going to be a type of sampler 2D. And then we'll just say U texture, that's going to be the image we pass through. The next one, we'll say uniform, uh, this will be a VEC2. And we're going to pass in the uh, U offset. Okay, so that's our uh, position. So I'll just say the next one is a varying and that's going to be a VEC2 and that's going to be VUV. This is going to be the UV coordinates we pass through to our fragment shader. Let's just change that to the right case. That should be U offset. Okay, so our uniforms are initialized for the uh, vertex shader. I'm next just going to create a float um, math.py um, variable here, just going to say that's equal to 3.141529, um, that'll do, for this effect. And then uh, we always need, um, let's just get this deformation curve function first. So we're going to, this is going to return a, a VEC3. So this is a function called deformation curve, and it takes in a VEC3 uh, position. Uh, it also takes in the UV, so the VEC2 uh, UV. And it also takes in a VEC2 uh, offset argument as well. Okay, and then in this function, we're just going to take the position on the, the x, uh, the x vertices, and we're going to say that's equal to position dot x plus, and then we're going to use the math sign function here, passing in the uv dot y times that math uh, variable we created, and then we're going to times that by the offset, and this will just get that dot x. This will just get that nice kind of curve uh, when we move our image. Do the same thing for the Y. Just change these around. That should be uh, sin uv dot x, And then we'll just change that to offset dot Y. And then we just want to return uh, a VEC3. Okay, so they return VEC3. And just return that position, sorry. And now we need to create a void main function. This is just where the kind of vertex shaders run. So we're just going to say VUV equals UV. So UV is passed in by 3JS, and we're just applying this VUV to equal that, and we're creating it, we're just setting that as a varying vector is passed into our fragment shader. Underneath this, I'm just saying VEC3 new position. We're going to use that deformation curve function, passing in the position, which is also passed in by 3JS, uh, the UV and the U offset, which we pass in with our uniforms. We next need to set the main geo underscore position variable that equals projection matrix uh, times model view matrix. And then we just need to say uh, times, that should be times, VEC4, and then we'll pass in the new position. And then that's a VEC3, so we just add 1.0 at the end. Remember to close off with semicolons in your uh, shaders. Okay, so that's it for our vertex shader. Next we want to do is the fragment shader. Again, we're going to just initialize our uniforms. So I'll just say uniform sampler 2D U texture at the top here. And then I'm going to say uniform, um, again, float. And we're going to just use that U alpha variable we pass through in our uniforms. Then we're going to get, um, do another uniform here, say vec2 U offset. 
And then finally, we just want to just do, uh, initialize that variant vec2 VUV, which we pass through our uh, vertex shader. Um, next, we're just going to pass, we'll create the void main function. And this is just going to say, um, we'll do a vec2, or no, vec, vec4 color. Um, we're just going to use the texture 2D uh, function here. So say texture 2D. And here we're just going to say, pass in the U texture uniform and the variant UV. So the VUV is used just to map the U texture coordinates to the mesh. So it, it fits the mesh with that image. And then with the um, fragment shader, we need to set the GL frag color variable to equal that color, okay? And then now what we need to do is we first import these um, shaders. So we'll say import fragment from dot forward slash, go to the shaders folder, forward slash fragments dot GLSL. And then we also just need to do the same thing for our vertex. I'll do it above that actually. Vertex GLSL. Okay, so that's our shaders. Now we need to just change the mesh uh, material because at the moment we're just currently using this basic material. We actually need to change that to be a shader material, okay? So if we come back down to our create mesh function, I'm gonna just change this mesh here. Okay, looks like we're getting an error. I might just have to reset my server here. Okay, I'm just running this again. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there, to be honest. Um, and then, so let's just say this dot material equals new free dot shader material. And this takes in a, a parameters. So the first one is our uniforms that we pass through to the WebGL. So we just say this.uniforms, which we set in our constructor. And then we need to pass in the um, shader. So the vertex shader. So the vertex shader is vertex. Fragment shader is fragment, which we import at the top. And then we just go inside a transparent, uh, set that to true. And this will just uh, basically make our mesh invisible when we uh, come out of the uh, UL. So we seem to have some errors here. So it looks like undeclared identifier UC. Let's go to our um, vertex shader UC. I can see in our deformation curve, that should be UV, not UC. Okay, so still got an error here. Okay, yeah, we need to just change this to capital M. And now you can see we have our images and when we hover each link, the uh, U texture changes to the relevant image. So that's great, that's all working. Okay, now um, we just need to make some amendments to our render function just to get this kind of animation applied. So the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna say this, we're gonna change the offset dot X. That's going to equal, we're going to use the lerp function and the first thing we're going to take in here is, is the start position, so this dot offset dot x. Um, and then the second argument here will be the target x uh, variable. And then we'll just do an ease of 10%. We'll do the same thing for the y offset, this dot offset dot y. So this is just basically our mouse coordinates, okay? Here we're just going to use the lerp function again. Change that to Y and the target Y as well. Okay. And then what we need to do here is just change our uniforms. So this dot uniforms dot offset u offset dot value dot set. And then here we're just going to say uh, for the X number, we're just going to say bracket target X 
minus this dot offset dot x and then we're just going to times this by a really small number okay so I'll just do times 0 0.0005 because this can be quite a wild effect if you don't tame it and then for the y we'll just do a minus target y minus bracket target y um, and then we'll just uh, subtract um, the this dot offset dot y and again, we're just going to multiply this by that small 0 0.005 number just to tame the um, effect. Okay, so we should have some effect here. Oh yeah, you can see now we move our mouse, we get that nice deformation curve effect. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, next thing we want to do is just obviously move this mesh with our uh, mouse, okay? So we're just going to say this dot mesh dot position dot set and then here um, for the x-axis, we're just going to say this dot offsets dot x. And then we're going to um, subtract the window dot inner width divided by two here in parentheses. And this will just center the uh, mesh to our mouse. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for the y. We'll just say minus this dot offset dot y. And this time we want to plus the window dot inner height divided by two. We have to do this just to align uh, the three JS coordinates with our HTML coordinates. Okay, so now you can see we get that nice uh, effect when we move our mouse. Looks really cool, I think. Okay, so that's cool. Um, what do we want to do next? Let's let's just uh, we'll say this dot links hover. So we're going to do a ternary operator here, okay? So we're going to say if our links are hovered, then we want to basically change our U alpha variable to zero, to transparent, okay? Uh, to to no to one to make it viewable. So we set this dot uniforms dot U alpha dot value, and we're going to use the lerp function again, and we'll set the initial start point to the actual current um, alpha value, U alpha value, and then for the second. As we want it to be uh, seen, we'll just set it to 1.0 and then we'll just do an easing of 10%. And then otherwise, we'll just copy this, but then all we want to do here is just change that second argument to zero, like so, to make it see through. We won't get this now because we haven't applied this in our shaders, okay? But you'll see shortly that we uh, we get that kind of opacity when we uh, leave the UL, when we when our mouse leaves the uh, unordered list area. So underneath this, I'm just finally going to do a for loop to go through each of our links. So say let i equal zero, whilst i is less than this dot links dot length, i plus plus. And we're going to say here, um, if this dot links hover, so if our URL list is hovered, then we're going to say um, each link can have, uh, should be, um, go slightly opaque. So we just say set the opacity to 0 0.2. Otherwise, if it's not hovered, we'll just come out of this, we'll just say else, and then we'll just set the opacity to one. So that's one. Now you can see when we hover the link, we get that cool, um, yeah, the, uh, the text uh, goes darker as well. Okay, so let's get the RGB split effect going now. So to do that, in our fragment shader, let's just do a uh, vec3 function called RGB shift. And this takes in three arguments. The first one is the texture, so the sampler 2D. That's the uh, texture, image texture. We'll just say texture image. And then the second argument is the UV. And then that's a VEC2. And then it also takes in a VEC2 offset as well. So the first thing we need to do here is get a float variable. It's initialized. That's, this is for the red channel. So just say float R equals texture 2D. Uh, yeah, texture 2D. And that takes our texture image. And then we're just going to say also the UV. And then we just need to plus the uh, offset, okay, to get that kind of curve. And then we just do dot R just to get the red channel. Then we do a vec2 a variable called GB for uh, green and blue. It's going to be texture 2D. Again, we pass in the texture image. 
and then we'll just say UV. And then after this, we'll just say .gb to get the green and blue channel. And then we want to use this. We just actually want to return a VEC3, um, including those two variables. So we just say R and then GB. And then in the main, um, we're just going to create a new color. And here we're going to use the um, RGB shift function. So I'll just uh, delete this. We'll say RGB shift. And then we're going to just pass in um, the first is the uh, U texture. And then uh, the VUV and then the uh, U offset. And then we'll just set. And that should be a VEC3. We're passing the U alpha. Yeah, sorry, we need to change um, that VEC4 color to a VEC3. So let's just do that now. Okay, and now you can see we get that cool RGB split effect when we move our mesh. And when we leave the yarn of the list, you can see it goes transparent. Let's make this full screen. And there you go. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up there. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe, uh, leave any comments, any questions. Uh, you have, I'll, I'll try my best to answer. But thanks, guys. <clears throat>